Hey everyone, Ashton here from Without Code, here today to walk you through the setup and functionality of our new Flipping Boxes widget. This widget offers a really cool and unique way to display images and text. Now as you'd guess from the title, we can see these interactive boxes flipping upon hover. Each box has a front side and a back side, and hovering over any box flips it over. Now the back side has its own image and content, so all content is completely unique on either side. The backside also has a button that can be linked. Now in the demo, we have examples of two of the four transition styles. The first widget uses the standard flip, and the second uses the 3D flip, which I think is really awesome. Jumping into our builder, I'm working with our recruitment agency template. And let's just go beneath our top row here, where we can see an empty spot that I've prepared to play around with our widget. So let me jump into our widgets panel, and down here in our media section, I'm going to grab our flipping boxes widget and drop it into our row. Now right off the bat, we can already see that the widget is functioning with the default content here. There aren't any images added yet, but the default text is here, and if we hover over the boxes, we can see them flipping even right here in the editor. We can also see the button on the back side as well. So let's hop into that settings panel and take a look. In the content section, uh, we'll cover a few settings here before we load in some content, and we'll start with the unique ID. So if you're going to use multiple instances of this widget on the same page, make sure to use unique IDs for each. Here we have column settings. This opens up another menu that lets us set the column count for desktop and mobile. Now we can leave these as default for now. So now let's load in some content. We're going to use the same images we just saw in our demo. Now the painting and artist images aren't really a great match for this particular theme, but that's okay. We'll click on the first list item, and we can see in this flyout panel we've got settings for the front side, and then scrolling down we can see settings for the back side. So for the front side image, we'll click Add Image, and I'll choose this colorful one right here from our library. Then beneath this we have the front side title, which we'll name it Autumn Blaze. And we'll just leave the front side description with the default text. So now let's scroll down here and add our image to the back side. And we'll grab this lady here with the glasses. And for this, we'll leave the title and description as default. Now really quick, let me add in some content for the other two boxes, since we're working with three boxes in our row currently. So for list item two, I'm going to add the second artist image here of the face and eyes. And we'll title this one Transitions. Now for the backside image, let me load in this one here of the one of the guy with the camera. And for list item three, we'll grab this blue image here. We'll title it Gray Day Wave. And for the backside image, we'll grab this one of the lady here with the pad of paper. Now right away after loading in our content, we can see that the content is extending outside of the box container. And we can fix that in just a moment in the design section. But first, let me cover the other settings here in the content section, starting here with static image position. Now by default, the position of the image may be different on the front and the back based on how much text content is used on each side. Now if it's important that you maintain the exact same image position on the front and back, you can toggle this option on. However, keep in mind that in order to do this, it might create an empty space on the front side of the box, and this is because the button is only shown on the back side of the card, so it creates an empty space on the front. Now, if the front sides of your cards happen to have more text content, then this might not be a problem. Next up, we have animation settings. This opens an additional menu with a few more options, including animation type, which you can use to choose one of the four different animation styles and animation speed. This sets the amount of time for the transition duration, which is the front transition to back and vice versa. Now let's hop into our design options here of the settings panel. So now that we've noticed that the content we've added is extending beyond the box container, we can fix that easily. The first setting here, height. This sets the height for the boxes. So for the content we've put in, let's bump this setting up to 522. This makes things look a lot better. Box horizontal spacing. This sets the space between the boxes, so I'll bump this up just a little bit to 15. We'll leave box vertical spacing alone for now since we won't need that in this example. And beyond this, there are extensive styling options. And the nice thing is that there are separate options for both the front and back sides. This allows you to position your images differently, format text differently, and so on. Maybe you have a lot of text to put on the back, but not the front, so having options to control image and font sizes is a big help here. 
Now I'm not going to walk through every single setting as they are all labeled with their exact function and most of them are pretty self-explanatory, but let me just discuss a few things quickly. If we open the front box styling options, we'll see quite a few padding options here. There's horizontal and vertical inner padding, horizontal and vertical image padding, and horizontal and vertical content padding. Now the top section controls padding for the entire box as a whole. So say you wanted 20 pixels of padding applied to both the image and the text content, you can do that in one move. Now beyond that, the image and the text content have their own padding settings too. So if for example, you wanted your image to go to the edge of the box, you could set your inner padding to zero and also set your image padding to zero. But you can then apply 20 pixels or so of padding to the content only so that the text isn't right up against the edge of the box. The majority of the remaining settings are typical settings like fonts, colors, and things like that. Now both the front box styling and back box styling sections are the same except for the fact that the back box settings contain styling options for the button, which only appears on the back side. So we'll leave our example alone for now as we could go really deep on tweaking fonts and colors and stuff, but before I go I wanted to pass along just a couple more tips. You are going to want to spend some time fine-tuning the padding so that you have a smooth look going from front to back. It's important to consider the space that you're working with. You may want to edit your text a little bit in order to have consistent amounts from card to card and from front to back. Also, consistency is really important with this widget. You're going to want your description text similar lengths, and you'll also want to maintain consistency in the images you use. Your images can be different on the front and the back, but it will look best in most cases if you prep the images to be the exact same shape or aspect ratio on all of the front side images and all of the back side images. As you can see from the first example of our demo, you can play with the image shapes, padding, and text lengths from the front side to the back side. So anyway, here in our preview, we can see these boxes flipping smoothly and beautifully, adding some awesome interaction and finesse to our web page. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. This is Ashton from Without Code, and I'll catch you in another tutorial very soon. Take care.